Hi guys, I'm Frederick and I play guitar in Opeth and you're watching and listening to Planet Metal. Frederick, um, yeah. you are on tour right now with the new album. Yes. It's called Pale Communion. And um, you played some shows already, I guess. Yeah, we had done about 12 shows, I think. So Maybe um, 13, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, and I saw you play uh, like two songs of the new record, is this right? Uh, three songs. Three songs. But um, how, how does the audience react on the new songs? Did you, did you see anything like, like smiling or...? Yeah, absolutely. I had cheering and everything. Because we start the set with um, uh, what's the name of it? <laughs> the fir very first song of the yeah, album, we'll "Eternal Rains Will Come." <laughs> yes, I should know. It directly leads into "Cusp of Eternity," and when we go into "Cusp of Eternity," it seems to be a bit of a woo effect, okay. and that's really nice. So it's the same sequences in, uh, as on the record. It is, yeah. Okay, yeah. So we do. We, we wanted to do an um, intro where we connect three songs. So then we continue with Bleak, so we get a good flow in the, mm -hmm. the start of the show. Okay. But uh, you are aware that uh, with the heritage, uh, most people were a bit of... Um, it was a bit of an obstacle for most of the people, because they don't expect a jazzy record like that. Yeah. How, how did you see that, the reactions of the, of the audience? Well, it has some jazzy elements, I think, but some parts of it, it's a really dark album, I think. And I'm proud of it that we did it, that, that we made that bold step and... But I also could understand some people got a bit upset or had a problem with, to relate with it. Um, but I think it was an album that we needed to do to do something different. Since Michael is the main writer in the band, he he has um, a need to do something different and branch out every now and then. It's a, it's a creative thing. It's the way it, it turned out. It's not that we're turning our backs on the death metal past with the band if you come and see us live to now we play a lot of that stuff <clears throat> and we still enjoy it very much to play it as well but you play a lot of very old stuff i think there's advent is in in there and um yeah. uh, april ethereal i think that's some song you you did you do it live in, 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 in back, back in years yeah yeah we played it um in those anniversary shows we did we played april yeah. ethereal for the it's a real rare song, otherwise, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost, um, it has even almost like black met metal elements in yeah. it, I would say. But um, yeah, so um, but I, coming back to your question, uh, if you look back on the Heritage album, that still a lot of people came to the shows and enjoyed it. So I don't know, I don't read all the complaints about on yeah. the internet, but. Um, but you read some, some some forums or something like that. Uh, I do, mm. and uh, I just saw that the, the people were missing the death growls, yeah. death grunts of, of Michael. But I, I, think, I think it's a, na a natural development for him to to yeah, to, way, to leave them away. Now, if, if the song doesn't request it, it's gonna be a bit cheesy to put it in just yeah. to have it as a as an element there. But um, it's not rolled out for the future that it might be, it was even talked to bring it in on this album in mm -hmm. one song. The song River was initially going to be even longer and more uh, freak out, more extreme at the end. Mm -hmm. So it was actually talk about it, but uh, I think we pushed it a bit far when we did the first tour for the Heritage and that might have confused a lot of people mm -hmm. that we didn't play any of the back catalog songs. So yeah, I was right. confused as well, I guess, yeah, I remember. So that, I think that pushed it even <laughs> further in a way, because looking back at the discography, discography of Opeth, you still have Damnation, which mm -hmm. is a very calm album, mm -hmm. and doesn't have any heavy moments at all, if you compare it to Heritage. It definitely has heavy moments, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's all part of the creative process, I guess. Yeah, I think so, very much. And to leave yourself some room yeah. For songwriting. Exactly. And I, see, see, it's interesting because we don't know what's going to happen on the next album. Mm -hmm. It's so early in the stage as well to talk about. Yeah. So let's talk about this album now, exactly. Pale, Pale Communion. Uh, you recorded it in, in Wales in some uh, Rockfield studio yeah. where legends like Saxon and Motorhead and 
Jewish priests were recording as yeah, well. Yeah, Rush was, as well. Yeah, Rush as well. Yeah. well um, was this some special atmosphere which uh, was in which is found in the record now as well? Yeah, maybe. I mean, it made us work really focused, and the location is a bit seal off. It's like you're living in a farm. So we wake up in the morning and see a couple of sheep and uh, horses and stuff, you know. <laughs> and uh, we stayed there and uh, had our meals there and everything, and that saved us a lot of time so we, we could work really focused. And that made us do the album in 13 days, which is good compared to the last one, which we did in three weeks, I think. Um, but also, there was definitely an atmosphere in the walls. When I found out, for instance, that Black Sabbath rehearsed there mm -hmm. before the very first Black Sabbath album, I didn't know that. So I was, wow, this is pretty cool. It's a haunted place as well. Yeah, they, they claim that they have a Freddie Mercury ghost there, because Queen <laughs> did. But I don't, know, I don't know if it's true. We didn't notice Every it. mansion in, in, in England got a ghost, has, has got a ghost yeah. inside, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was definitely inspiring uh, with the history and everything, and also the technical aspect. We worked with a technician called Tom Tolgerchi, and it worked mm -hmm. out fine. And it was a small village nearby, so we could have a 20-minute walk to the closest pub for uh, a couple of beers now and then. And uh, talking about the techni technical stuff, um, I guess uh, you, you're the guy in the band which people come to to talk about, like the new guitar gizmos and your new amp amplifi amplification and things like that. Uh, just let, let, let's turn this a bit around. Um, uh, what is... Uh, the day in the private life of uh, Frederick Augustin, um looks like. Is it just guitar playing and guitar practicing? Or is there some, something else as well? Yeah, absolutely. I have a, a daughter that's a bit more than one year old now. So that takes a lot of time with the kids. So it's um, <clears throat> getting up, fixing breakfast, and putting her to a day kindergarten, mm -hmm. and then back home to play guitar, basically. With her? No, alone. <laughs> or a rehearsal with a band. Uh, maybe sometimes I'll give a lesson or something, but um, that's pretty much it. Mm. It's pretty calm. Mm. It's a bit schizophrenic life, being on tour where you, the show is the headlight of the day and then you drink some beers yeah. or whatever. <clears throat> that would have been my next question because uh, you very often not at home. Exactly, and then <clears throat> when you come home, it's it takes you a bit, a bit of time to adapt and to get into the old paste of the home family lifestyle. Yeah, it's very different. But uh, we do, we've been doing it for a while now, so I think we're getting better to adapt when you well get home. You're used to it meanwhile, so... Yeah, but now we've been, we have had a quite of a break, even though we've been working with the new album and doing some festivals, but mm. for the heavy type of touring that's just started now, we, we had a bit of a break from that, so... You're going to, to America in uh, December, I guess? Yes. But I, I saw it's, it's, it's scheduled like th that you are home again at uh, Christmas. Yes. <laughs> so. so we're touring three, four weeks at a time, and then we're going to be home for a week. So we try to uh, schedule it like that. So um, back to the album. Um, which were your contributions this time to, to the songwriting? Because the um, main songwriting is done by um, Mikael. Well, it's Mike wrote the entire album, but I think everybody in the band put their type of um, to the final product. Everybody put their type of uh, playing into it, made it uh, boosted it up, which is a good thing. But uh, apart from uh, well, I came up with guitar solos and stuff like that. Mm. But uh, when it comes to the melodies and lyrics and songs, Michael wrote the entire album this time. We worked on a couple of ideas, but they didn't happen this time around. Mm. But um, I think it came out great, the way it did, so. And you are fine with the way it is? Yeah, yeah. To it's contribute cool. some I mean, it's, to it's always been the pilot of the band, and, mm. and he, he has a unique, unique creativity, I think. Uh, so I don't want to be the guy that tries to push in yeah. ideas, you know. But uh, I do play him ideas, and sometimes he, he really likes it. And uh, you played in several bands before, um, Arch Enemy you were for, for the whole mm -hmm. island, and the first, first time with Tiamat, and things like that, and you are a session musician here and there for other bands. Um, is Opeth uh, the perfect band for you um, when it comes to this? 
Yeah, I think so, because um, it's still exciting. It covers a lot of different uh, musical territories. And that's, uh, that's a challenge, actually, not to play the ty same type of thing all the time. Even though I'm a metalhead and all, it's still challenging to play mm. a bit of different stuff as well. And I still think it's exciting with Opeth. I, I still we can take the band sounds to different levels. Yeah, because uh, you, you, are, you are in for three records now? They are three but, uh, studio but, uh, albums. In, in total there is 11 now. <coughs> so um, there is pretty much everything you said, which, which can be said for a band in 11 records, which all sound different. So what do you think, where is, where is Opeth head, headed in the future? It's difficult to say, but um, let's surprise yourself. Yeah, <laughs> by your own creativity. It could be a really heavy thing or something. It's yeah. it's uh, we don't know yet. I think you said in some interview you said there's some maybe maybe it's a grand core album, but I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, <laughs> even Michael said that. I think I don't think so. So um, maybe that's pushing it a little bit, but uh, yeah, you never know. I think we took. I think Heritage and Pale Communion is kind of a continuation of Heritage. They're a bit connected. Like um, Ghost Reveries and Watershed mm -hmm. is also a bit connected. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's time for some other kind of thing. Uh, we're happy to have you around with the Pale Communion album for now. So, um, Last question. Um, your bandmates, um, can you describe them with uh, three words each? Um, and at least um, the last one yourself. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> that's a tough one. It's always a tough one. Well, you can, you're going to edit this you can one. You mind it as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I should start with Michael, he is an um, honest person, uh, stubborn person. And uh, uh, a cool person. <laughs> very ta uh, ta well, when it comes to creative. Yeah, yeah, that's a good word. And X. X is a funny person, very much so, and um, fantastic drummer, I think, very yeah. musical drummer, and. Uh, he also has a evil side when he's too drunk. <laughs> or when he plays with blood bath or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, Martin? Martin Mendes is um, he is like a rock, a very calm person. And a uh, good friend and uh, very musical. Mm. And Joachim? Yeah. Joachim is... Um, Ambitious he's person. Just a news, news guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ambitious, I would say, and um, quite easy to get a, get along with. Uh, likes beer. It's <laughs> <laughs> the only one in the band yeah. who does. Um, yeah, you. I can't describe you myself. Can. It's. Uh, yeah. you, you leave that out for the viewers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. um, so uh, I think it's a perfect mixture musicians in the band. It says a lot about the, the band chemistry and why the band is uh, at the point where it is right now. So we hope um, there are another 11 albums coming yeah, on to us. And um, We're still very excited and, and grateful to be able to do this. Yeah. And it's, it's great to be out touring again. It feels good. And you're 42, I guess. So yeah, that's there. right. And I was born 72. Yeah, but uh, uh, somehow I feel like I'm 25 still. Yeah. I don't know why, but... Not, not everybody in this age can say that. <laughs> yeah, well, I started yeah, working out a bit musician. more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I met musicians which are uh, our age, which are quite twice our age, actually, mm. because they done too much in the past. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So take care of yourself and then... <laughs> you need to eat your... Um, make it easy. Your um, celery and stuff. <laughs> yeah, of course. Spinach. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> and work out. <laughs> okay. Work out with a beer can. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. My pleasure.